when my parents were born, there was no way of thinking of any PC. When I was born, there was in the late 50s, last century, there was the first PC was coming up, but these were huge things. My son was born seven years ago. When he was two, he had access to this kind of piece of glass, which who of you does not have this kind of piece of glass in the pocket? Two, great, three. He could access anything he liked without being able to speak, to write, to speak he could, but write, read, no, no chance. But this was the power he had in his, in my pocket actually. We are living in times of incredible complexity and the complexity is even growing. My feeling was through the last 20 years and I'm this kind of digital person since 25 years, my feeling it was more or less linear. There was linear raising of complexity. Through the last 10 years, I have the feeling it's more like this, exponential. And no end in sight. There's not the time where I would guess in five years it's over, in 10 years maybe. I don't see it. So the I was just looking for representation for that. I like the, 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 your, your example very much, the railway and the pomegranate. Um, I was looking for pictures because I was feeling somehow insecure in that incredible change. And this is just a representation to visualize the complexity, the network. But in the back of my mind, I felt trapped in this kind of thinking. And I called that Brockhaus thinking. And I started using that thing, that, that metaphor, about three years ago, while I was, sta while I was standing in front, of my, in front of my bookshelf at home, looking at my encyclopedia, I lost 20 books, and looking at the level of dust on top. And tr I tried to, try to remember what was the time when I actually was using those books. I couldn't remember. Who of you owns an encyclopedia still? Be honest. I'm owning it still. It's still on the shelf. And I put one, put one book out. It was from 1987. And that was about the time where I was really actively, constantly using that thing. And then I started asking myself, do I not want to know anything anymore? Of course, I want to know anything a lot of things every day, and I'm using the networked version of the encyclopedia, which is called Wikipedia or Google. And I'm using my piece of glass for this all the time, every day, at least two times. And I started standing in front of that bookshelf. I kept standing because it reminded me to something. I have to deal, I'm dealing a lot with people who are leading companies, who are running huge organizations, CEOs, CTOs, CIOs, HR people. Just in this morning, I was sitting together with a person responsible for HR for 300,000 people. Unbelievable numbers. So when I was looking at that bookshelf and I was, and I was thinking that reminds me, whenever I get in touch with, with people, um, with CEOs, I ask them, there's a whiteboard, please draw me a picture of your organization. And usually they end up with a thing like this. What you see here. We have 10 departments and they are sorted like this and we have this kind of organizational structure and there's a, the management, there's this, the board level on top and there's a management level one and two is a little bit more in detail. But it reminds, reminded me very intensively to what I was seeing there in front of me. And then I was 2013, the publisher of Brockhaus found out that they had to discontinue the print version in 2014. Bertelsmann decided to stop it. 200 years of history over. Stop. They even missed the point to go digital. So they completely were thinking that there will be a time where 
the digitalization will be over. No. So when I, was use, I started using this because it explained me this kind of drawing, I tried to use, this is my pomegranate, the 2D version, you know, um, of how to represent the network and, for, and especially the paradigm shift from this way, the old traditional way to think in a linear way, the analog way. We, we had to sort things, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We had to take, take them apart, put them into separate books. We had to do that, there was no other way. And so we trained also our thinking that way. But now we are living in this kind of connected times and a lot of us, including me, we think, are thinking that we are connected because we are on Facebook, on the social networks and all this. The truth is, looking at our students, and I have about 1,000 alumni now running through the D school in Potsdam. They try to get the people out of that columns, out of that silos, into a network mode. The truth is, the pockets are connected. The machines are connected. The minds are separate. Why? Because our whole education system is set up in a way that it's focusing on individual performance and on individual competition, not on collaboration. And <coughs> so what do we do to get people out of that old mode? What we do with our students is we put them in teams, we put them out of the silos, we put them in diverse teams, little teams, not too, too small, not 10, it's too large, four, five, six. Diversity in any kind, men, women, different disciplines, different cultural backgrounds, different personalities. We put them in a mode, a working mode, which is non-linear, because in times of constant change, we don't, we, we cannot rely on linear works to work. This is the railway way that leads to a certain end. The end is defined, but we don't know actually nowadays where the end is. We need a way, and these six steps we do over and over again. The important part is not the six steps. Remember the little lines indicating that we do this over and over and over again. And the third thing we are taking care of is the space. In times of constant change and this radical paradigm shift we are in right now, we cannot stay just in the old patterns, in the old physical structures. We need to rearrange it. And this is why we made everything flexible. We put everything on wheels. We made people in a stand-up position. We actually had to design the furniture at the D school at, at Potsdam um, to suit those teams of four, five, six people. And this is, I call that the, the, the dynamic triangle of design thinking. This is what we are doing every time, and it's very simple, very basic. But if you take that serious, if you move, from the, move your focus from the individual to a team, if you use a nonlinear process instead of a linear way to work, and if you change your physical environment, you're changing the culture of learning. And we do the same thing also with companies, exactly the same thing. In the morning, I was talking with those people from those large corporations exactly about this. What is the most important things to do? And how does that feel in a corporation with 300,000 people? And how does it affect the people who are leading this corporation? Because they are also in their traditional mindset and they are also grown up like you and me. They were grown up in an education system which focusing, focusing on individual competition. Who of you did his or her final thesis in a team? Like the doctoral thesis or so. Oh, those is, this is a large number. It's about four, five. Can't, can't believe it. Now imagine a time where, to my question, all of you would have raised your hand, except the four. And they would have to explain, oh yeah, my father didn't like this teamwork thing, you know, we, 
that is, that, is so, that is not good, so I had to do it. I did this on my own. We are not living in those times. We are living, we are not prepared for this way, for the network way to think. We are prepared for this way to think. We are still, we are still putting kids, our school kids, our students, and also the education people in, the, um, in large corporations into this structure. We have them think, we make them think, we have to sort, we have to organize the reality like this. But we have to imagine that this transition, which we are seeing and feeling and experiencing and witnessing right now, all of us, we are part of that. In 50 years from now, we will look back and our kids will talk, start talking about you know, remember those times when there was a shift, there were still analog things. And in 50 years, you will have a hard time to explain what analog is. We are all experienced this. We are all moving from analog devices to digital devices. So, and look at that arrow. The direction of that paradigm shift is irreversible. This is very important to notice. Because a lot of people still think somehow in 10 years from now there will be a 20 or 40 books of Brockhaus back in the shelf and then we are rescued. Everything is there. That will not happen. So we have to prepare for this. And I would love to share another, another idea, a last idea which we are just starting to develop because we were looking at new spaces. We were looking at new procedures. We are trying to do this now through the last eight years with hundreds, thousands of students. We are training about 1,000 professionals a year with the same very basic things. And we can, we, we not, it's not only about coming up with new furniture, with new spaces, with new procedures. It's also, we also have to come up with new words. And a friend of mine who was, who was looking at that picture, and he was, he was seeing what, where I positioned myself with that little cross at the very top. I'm not, a, I'm not a network thinker at all. I think none of us, I have never met a person who is actually in that mode. The machines are, but the, person, the people not. So a, per, a friend of mine, Peter Spiegel, he looked at that picture and he was saying, Uli, you know what, the old pattern you were describing, the traditional pattern, could be defined through IQ. We measure the intelligence of a single person. And we are doing this since 100 years. A German, 100 years ago, he came up with that idea. Great idea. We measure a single performance, and there's a number, 84, 92, 112. We do the same thing in schools, a little bit more in detail. English, four, German, two, mathematics, one, and so on. University, the same thing. And then he came up, he looked at the other picture, at this little drawing, and he was saying, you know what? The new way is defined through WeQ. And I looked, I was a little bit, looked it up in the, at Google, couldn't find it. So Peter, you just, I just made it up. And I said, Peter, this is it. This is an incredible term because it shows and really concentrates what a lot of things are showing right now. Look at car sharing, look at crowd financing, look at all the, all the activities going on right now. Most of it, most of the new things are focused on we qualities. And it's not about how to measure the we Q of a single person. No, we probably not do that. It's more the direction. It's something which helps me to say, okay, this, I'm coming out of the IQ mode. I was measured as a single person all the time in school, university, and I'm trained to do things in a traditional way. But the direction I'm walking towards now is a weak you direction. 
a new mode, which we have to discover, since most of us are at that little cross up there. Our students are a little bit further. My little seven-year-old son, he is in second grade. I looked at his weekly calendar in his, of his school. He's in a normal school in Berlin. I was shocked because the calendar looked pretty much the same than 50 years ago when I went to school. And it looked like the upper structure, not like the structure here. And what I'm hearing from him is that they're doing exactly the same things we did 50 years ago. My wish is that all of you, especially of those of you who have kids, do the same thing as I try to do. Start thinking together with the school how to do the transformation with the kids, for the kids, from the upper Brockhaus thinking to a network thinking. There are tons of ways. It's new for everybody. There's not one single thing you should do. There's not nothing to copy from any country, from any company. We just have to figure it out. We have to walk that way and just be aware it is irreversible and it's still, if you do that, if you do change the three core things, it's changing the culture and it's a lot of fun. Thank you very much.